By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have another really sweet MTG 9394 battle for you. It's going to be Mono Brown, so that's Mono Artifacts. That's the deck that I'm playing. Tannis' Toy Store, and I'm taking on Yupvak, and he's playing Mono Black, built around a playset of Nettling Imps. So this is a really sweet Mono Black deck, not your traditional aggro black deck. This is really more a mid-range control deck, I guess, although it also has some aggressive nature in it. Anyway, you'll, you'll see it in action in a moment. And also, of course, I'm going to discuss these decks in the deck deck section of the video. Talking about that, if you want to go straight to the matches and check out the deck decks afterwards, the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the game action. And in that same description below, you will also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And there you can find out how you can become a sponsor of the show. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron as well. It already starts with just $1. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. But we're not yet at the end scroll. No, no, no. This episode is just starting. And I'm now going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with my own deck, Taunus's Toy Store. Let's have a look. And here we see my deck, Taunus's Toy Store. Now, maybe you're wondering, who is Taunus? Well, Taunus is the apprentice of Urza. So he was like his right-hand man. He was a really talented artificer and used to have a toy store before he became an artificer. So hence the name uh, Taunus's Toy Store. And when you read the flavor text on Triskelion, you can read that people believe that he is the one that created the trike. So I thought if you created the trike, you probably also created the Tetravus. So Tetravus is also in this deck. And of course, there are also cards in the game of magic that are named after Taunus, like the Candelabra of Taunus and Taunus's Coffin. So those cards are in here as well. Now, when we look at this deck, this is really a full-on artifact deck, right? So what I hope to do, I hope to get to Tronlands together, so the tower, the mine, and the power plant, so that they tap for a lot of mana and I can start casting my really bigger artifacts. And of course, I'm combining this with the Candelabra of Taunus. So Candelabra of Taunus is a really nifty artifact. It's one to cast, pay X, untap X target lands. So what I can do here is if I have all the Tron lands, I can tap my three Tron lands for seven mana, put three of those mana into my Candelabra of Taunus, untap my lands again, and so I can tap my Tron lands again, and I can have a bonus of four mana. So all of a sudden I get 11 mana out of three Tron lands. Can you still follow me? Well, you know, I'm going to show you hopefully in the game anyway, that will kind of clear it out. And of course, when you're playing with this Candelabra of Taunus, it also works really well with Mishra's Factories because you can untap the Mishra's Factory while it's attacking and then it can pump itself an additional time or you can just do all kinds of shenanigans with it. I'm also playing with Deserts. The same idea, I can untap the Desert multiple times. If I am lucky enough to find an active library of Alexandria and a Candelabra of Taunus on the board together. I mean, oh boy, that's just nuts because I can then untap the Candelabra. I mean, use the Candelabra of Taunus to untap the library of Alexandria and I can like draw extra cards above like the one extra card I'm already drawing from uh, the library of Alexandria. So that would be just really nuts. So you can just do a lot of fun things with the Candelabra of Taunus. The problem with the candlestick though is that sometimes you have no purpose for it and it's just a lost card. You know, you've just got to wait till all the components kind of hit the board before you can really uh, take advantage of it and abuse it, you know, but it is a very, very powerful artifact. Now, if I've got all this mana, one of the main things that I can do, of course, with it is use it for my rocket launcher. Rocket launcher, of course, four to cast. You cannot use it to turn it comes into play, but after that, you can pay two mana to deal one damage to any target and it destroys itself at the beginning of the next end step. Now this beginning of the next end step is pretty important because it means that I can use it twice if I use it the right way. Because I can use it at the end of the end step of my opponent and then I get to keep it my entire turn until the next beginning of the end step, right? So I can basically use it twice, which is really cool. And of course, uh, the rocket launcher works really well with the Tron Candelabra uh, a combo if I can assemble those pieces. Now, if I don't have my rocket launcher, that's also fine when you're looking at this list there are a lot of artifacts in here with a high casting cost, right? I'm playing two Sword of the Ages. Sword of the Ages, awesome card, six to cast, comes into play tapped. When it untaps, 
You can tap and sacrifice an X amount of creatures and deal damage equal to their power to any target. The thing is, the creatures though and the sword, they are removed from the game, unfortunately. I mean, if they would go to the graveyard, this card would be so much more useful, but I still think it's good in this deck because I'm playing with juggernauts who have five power. I'm playing, you know, with all those bigger creatures that all have four power. Juggernauts have five power, like I said, and I'm also playing with the Colossus of Sardia, which is a nine nine, right? So if we could get a Colossus on the board at a certain point, sack it to the sword, then it doesn't even have to deal combat damage. There, there's nine damage right there. And if I can just combine it with a Juggernaut, I already have 14 damage, right? That is quite a lot of damage. So I think Sword of the Ages will do really well in here. I'm also playing with the uh, one Mirror Universe. I think Mirror Universe in decks like this is quite important because you know you can fall behind so quickly while you try to assemble all your pieces i don't have access to bolt or to swords there's not really a way for me to quickly dispose of a creature so when i'm playing against a more aggressive deck mirror universe could come in really handy so that when i'm almost dead hopefully just in time you know i can uh, swap life totals with the mirror universe um then of course i'm also playing here with tonus's coffin which is really nice synergy with tetravis and with uh, triskelion Maybe you wonder why. Well, I can put a creature in the coffin, then I can untap my coffin again. And when the creature comes out of the coffin, all the enter the battlefield triggers happen again. So my Triskelion comes into play with three plus one plus one counters on it. If it's uh, coming out of the coffin, the same thing happens. So I can just like save up a lot of counters. I can make a really big trike or I can make a really big Tetravis. So again, um, th the thing with this is that you do need a lot of time. So this deck it needs some time and of course to kind of accelerate this i am playing with all the moxins so hopefully the moxin can help me to go really quick and hopefully you know i can assemble tron really quick if not i am playing with one jalem tome to kind of quickly go through my deck i'm also playing with two jm day tomes what i really like is the synergy between suchi and jm day tome when suchi dies you get four mana the problem is suchi often dies in combat meaning you can only use those four mana for fast effects or to cast instants or interrupts. And that's not always possible, right? But of course, with a book, I can always use that four mana to draw a card with my Jam Day Tome. So having a Suchi in play with a Jam Day Tome, it is always a great feeling because then when your opponent kind of disenchants your Suchi on your end step, you're like, okay, fine, you know, I get, I get a card from it. You know, I'm fine, I can use it for my book. And it's kind of a feel good for me and a feel bad for my opponent. And that's why I really like that synergy. And of course, I love drawing cards. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. I'm really looking forward to show it to you on the channel. I hope it's going to do all the crazy stuff that I have in my mind. Let's hope it works. And now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Mono Black by Joop Vak. And I just really love playing against this list because it is so nostalgic. You know, this is the black lists like you used to see them back in the day, or at least I where I was playing. And um, the cool thing is here, there's just a lot of synergy built around the Nettling Imp. So the Nettling Imp is this 1-1 one, one creature, right? For one black and two. Beautiful art by Quentin Hoover. I mean, that man, he can make art. It's unbelievable. The detail, the lines, so sharp. Anyway, uh, the, what the Nettling Imp does, it's a 1-1 one, one, and you can tap it and then you can force a creature of your opponent uh, to force your opponent to attack with one of his creatures, right? So for example, if he has a 2-2 two, two, and you have like a Sengir Vampire, you can force a 2-2 two, two, two attack gobble it up with your Sangi Vampire, and then your Sangi Vampire, of course, becomes a 5-5. Five five. So that's a really obvious synergy, but there are more synergies in here. When your creature has to attack, they usually have to tap as well, unless you're like a Sarah Angel or a Sephir Falcon. But most creatures have to tap when they attack in old school, and when they tap, they can be killed by the Royal Assassin. So Nettling Imp Royal Assassin is also a nice, um, a nice trick here in the deck. Another one is uh, Sorcerer's Queen with Nettling Imp. So Sorcerer's Queen, a card from Arabian Nights, two black and one for a 1-1. One, one. Tap, uh, target creature becomes an 0-2. So, you know, again, Nettling Imp forced the opponent to attack. Let's say with, with my Suchi, which is a 4-4, use the Queen to make it into an 0-2. And again, maybe even gobble it up with a Sengir Vampire or just kill it with Hypnotic Spectre. All of it is possible. So there are just a lot of tricks in this deck. And then there's even another Nettling Imp trick. And that is the uh, Icy Manipulator Nettling Imp. Because Nettling Imp forces the creature to attack. If the creature doesn't, the creature is destroyed. So what you can do is with Icy Manipulator, you can tap down the creature. Then force your opponent to attack with that creature. And of course he can't. So it dies. Another nice thing about this is that all these cards are also useful without the Nettling Imp. So when you have the Imp on a battlefield, the cards get 
even better. But when you don't, they're still really good cards. Now, um, the other cards he's playing with here, we of course see the traditional Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. That's definitely here. That's something I'm actually pretty scared of. He's also playing with four sinkholes. So that's a great way to kind of um, destroy my plans for Tron. And uh, he's also playing with one very powerful Juzam Jin and a beautiful, beautiful Nightmare. So that is really cool. And there's just a lot of really cool black cards in here. And I'm also kind of, I'm liking the deck. I think it's really nice. I also like the two Jam Day Tomes indicating that he really has a more controlish battle plan than most mono black decks, right? The mono black decks I know are usually super aggressive and don't really care for card draw later, or maybe they'll play with a greed perhaps to just get a lot of cards really quickly. And this deck is like, no, I've got the time, you know, I'm more of a controlish deck with all my little one ones and my combat tricks. So I'm gonna play those uh, GM Day Tomes in the deck, you know, they make sense here. Anyway, this is the list of my uh, opponent, Yoop Vak. And now we are gonna go to the match. So it's mono brown versus mono black. Here we go. Game number one, here we go. It looks like I'm on the play here, starting with an Urza's Tower. Ooh, only five cards in hand, so I guess I've taken a mulligan. I'm playing a Mono Brown, Tonus's Toy Store, and Yoop is playing a Mono Black. Oh, look at him go, Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. This was the opening I feared, because I'm only playing with artifacts. I don't really have a quick answer here. Maybe a Maze of If, but only one in the deck. I'm playing a Desert here, passing the turn, so that Desert is not gonna save me here. There's the attack. So taking two points of damage first, I guess going to 18, and then I have to discard a card at random. My opponent picking here card number three. So Mishra's Factory is a goner. And I already started with one card less. Oh, this is not going great. I really need a quick solution to that Hypnotic Spectre or else this game could be over soon. There it is. Oh, this is really sweet. Double Desert, wow. This is what you want to do in life. So Desert is a card from Arabian Nights. Tap to deal one damage to target attacking creature after it has dealt damage. So now I've got two. So I could um, kill the Hypnotic Spectre if Yoop chooses to attack with it. Now remember, after I've taken damage. So I do take damage and discard a card. But after that, I can kill the Hypnotic Spectre. We see Yoop here, by the way, casting a Sorcerer's Queen. And look at that. He's passing the turn, choosing not to trade in his Hippie for two damage and me discarding a card. There is a Maze of If. Okay, so now I'm really safe from the Hypnotic Spectre. Passing the turn back to Yoop here. And it's going to be tough for Yoop to kind of try to find an opening. There's another factory. Okay, let's see if he can cast another creature. Oh, there's the Netling Imp. So his deck is kind of built around the Netling Imp. He's playing with a full playset. Really nice to see this one. I think this is the Summer Edition. He's got a global set. And there's a Willow the Wisp finding its way to the board as well. An 0-1 Flyer. And for one black, you can regenerate it. It used to be played all the time, but now Maze of If has gained more popularity, I think, than the Willow. There we see a Mishra's Power Plant. Sorry, an Urza's Power Plant, of course. And uh, now I only need an Urza's Mind to get Tron, but four mana in my deck is kind of a big deal. It allows me to play Suchi, Juggernaut, which is really bad on this board, by the way. I'm sure I'm not going to cast a Juggernaut, but also Icy Manipulator. So just lots of options when I hit the four mana. Let's see what I'm going to do. What is going to happen? Oh, a rocket launcher. Yeah, this card is sick against the deck of Yoop, actually. Didn't think about it, but this card is so good against Yoop's deck because he's playing with so many 1-1 creatures. So uh, the rocket launcher paid two, deal one damage to any target. And at the beginning of the next end step, it is destroyed. But uh, yeah, you can pay two for your whole turn and just deal one damage to any target. So as long as you've got a lot of mana, you can kill a lot of stuff. And look at this, you going for an alpha strike, realizing, of course, that as soon as I can start using the rocket launcher, I can kill lots of, um, I can kill lots of his creatures. So I think this is a good attack here. I'm dropping to 12. Of course, sending back the Hypnotic Spectre. I don't want to lose another card. So now I've got four in hand. I mean, I need, if I can find that mine, I mean, I can play a huge... Rocket Launcher, and I can kill most of his creatures, I believe. Ooh, look at that. Not finding any land. So this is actually kind of good news here for Yoop. So I wonder what's going to happen this turn. Kind of showing that I now have my deserts as well to kill creatures with. I wonder what I'm going to do. 
I mean, he could go for an Alpha Strike, but that's kind of risky because I've got those deserts and I could kill quite a lot of creatures. But if he passes the turn, what I'm probably going to do is use the Rocket Launcher at the end of my end step, or actually the end of my opponent's end step, Yoop in this case. And because it destroys itself at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, it means I can use it in my turn as well. So I can get double, can take double use out of it. So what I could do, for example, is on the end step of my opponent here, kill Dipnotic Spectre and then untap everything, use it again to, for example, kill uh, the two 1-1 one -one creatures as well. So kind of a difficult position here for, for Yoop to be in. I wonder if he's got any options. I mean, he is playing mono black, so there are just not a lot of answers to artifacts, of course. Actually, zero when you're looking at his list. So putting the cards away. I really wonder what he's going to do. Perhaps another alpha strike. Remember, I am on 12, which is quite low. Yeah, he's really taking his time and it's understandable because if he just passes the turn, I like I said, I can do the end step trick, basically kill some creatures for nothing and then use my rocket launcher again in my turn. And if I then find a mine, that would be absolutely disastrous. But uh, he's really in a pickle here. And I think that the one thing he's got going for himself is that he's on 20 and I'm on 12. Yeah, look at this animating the factories. He's going to go for it. And I, and I understand, absolutely understand. He's just swinging in with everything. So I can maze. Mazing the Hypnotic Spectre here. I mean, I could take six damage, drop to six and use the desert. Or of course I could use the rocket launcher. It looks like I'm using the desert here to kill one of the factories. But remember, that means I do take the damage first, dropping to six here. That is tough. And I'm also using the rocket launcher, okay. So probably using the rocket launcher here on the end step of Yoop, so to make sure that I can untap and still use it. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. So I'm destroying the Sorcerer's Queen and taking my turn. I mean, can I find that mine? That's quite important. I mean, I've got control. The problem is I'm on six. Now remember, the rocket launcher will be destroyed this turn because it says at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So that is definitely going to happen. Using the launcher here, killing the hypnotic specter, passing the turn. I wonder if, I mean, what I could have done as well is kill the willow and the netling imp. I mean, netling imp is kind of a difficult card. That would have meant, of course, that I would take uh, some damage next turn because probably he would have attacked with the um, Mishra's Factory. But then again, I, and, and the Hypnotic Spectre, of course, and then I would have uh, sent back the Hippie, taking the damage. Look at that, another Hypnotic Spectre hitting the board here. So he's doing a pretty good job at trying to uh, keep pressure on. I mean, I'm on six. If he can find maybe a Dark Ritual and then a, a Sengir Vampire, for example, that would be kind of great for him. Okay, this is good. This strip mine is really handy because it can take care of that Mishra's factory. And already, by the way, Yoop has been quite low on mana. I didn't really notice because he just kept playing stuff out because his, his deck, kind of three for him is the magic number. Um, but yeah, he is low on mana, so he cannot really do a lot. So we're both kind of, you know, clinging, not really finding the amount of mana that, that we both need. Anyway, playing a Suchi here, the 4-4 creature, yeah, I can kind of feel that I'm getting more and more control of this game. Of course, Yoop can next turn force me to attack with the Suchi, then uh, block on the Willow and regenerate so that I don't have that blocker anymore. So I'm on 6 and he's on 20. Tapping 2, what are we going to do? Ooh, Demonic Tutor. What can you tutor for in this situation? Or you just, maybe you're just going to go for a land or a dark ritual. You know, of course, it depends what you have in hand. Maybe you're going to go for a sinkhole, you know. To, to actually, sinkhole, get rid of Maze of If. That is not that bad. So choosing a card here. If it is a sinkhole, then he's probably going to pass. 
Mind Twist is another option as well, although I'm not sure if he's playing with it. I forgot. Because he doesn't always play Mind Twist. He's not a big fan of the card. Ooh, there's a Soul Ring. Maybe he looked up the Soul Ring. That could help, because then he's got five. That, that kind of signals to me. There's the attack. That kind of signals to me that he's got a Singular Vampire in hand. Anyway, sending it back with... Uh, with the mace, and here I'm destroying that land for two reasons, because Mishra's Factory is more pressure, but the main reason here is I don't want him to have the five mana. So if he has a Sengir, then he still needs to find another land if he wants to cast it. Ooh, there's a mine. I've got Tron. Now it's happening, baby. So Tron is activating, meaning my mine, my power plant, two each for when I tap them, and my tower, three. So seven mana. Oh, this is killer. This is a killer. Finding the Mirror Universe. That is pretty disastrous here for Yoop. This means that next turn he has to find a way to kill me or get rid of the Mirror Universe. But this is really tough. So Mirror Universe, a card from Legends. Super cool card. Six to cast. During your upkeep, you can tap and sack it to swap life totals. But uh, yeah. That is really a, really a killer here. Yoop saying that... Uh, Asking if I'm playing this in my second main or my first main because he actually forgot to use his imp. And, um, you know, these are casual games. I said, you know, do, use it. It's fine. But he didn't want to say, no, no, no. I made a mistake. It's fine. I'm not going to use it. Anyway, oh, there's the strip mine. But he's going to cast something first. Okay, there's a sing here. I mean, I wonder what he looked up. Was it the soul ring or was it the strip mine? Right? I mean, both cards make sense. Passing the turn here. So the Sengir is there. Of course, I'm going to change the lives. So I'm going to go up to 20. And Yupir, oh man, dropping all the way to 6. This is going to be really rough for him. Trying to get out of this. I mean, I've got Tron on the table. I'm on 20 now. Yeah, this is going to be really difficult. Because my deck is, is going to work on, on all cylinders with, with Tron. The best thing for me now would just be a Gem Day Tome so I could just start drawing cards and, and play stuff out. So tapping nine here in total. Oh, there are the dice. Nine mana floating. Casting a Candelabra of Tannis. Yeah, this card is insane with Tron. So what I can do now is you use the Candelabra and you kind of see me using the dice to indicate how much mana I still have floating to untap all my lands again. I can tap my lands again. And of course, you know... This can make generate a lot of mana. So I wonder what I want to do with the mana. I'm a little bit in the tank still. Three mana floating, tapping more. So I've got seven mana, I guess. Okay, playing a Tannis Coffin. So Tannis' Coffin, uh, three and tap. And I can put target creature into the coffin, meaning it's exiled until the coffin untaps again. Let's see if I'm going to choose a target for it. I mean, the Sengir Vampire would be very flavorful. And I am going to use the Coffin here. And the creature that's in the Tannis' Coffin is considered exiled out of the game. Oh yeah, putting the Sengir in the Coffin. Very sweet, very flavorful. As soon as the uh, Coffin gets destroyed, by the way, the creature comes back into play tapped. So that could be relevant as well. Oh, playing a Jam Daytomia, yeah, really finding all the cards I need here. So next turn I can generate a lot of mana and draw an extra card. This is going to be so difficult for Yoop. I mean, how is he going to find a way out of this? I do not know. He's got the strip. He can take care of the mace. Um, he's got the imp to force me to attack with the Suchi. So that's something. And of course, I forgot about that. He's got the Hypnotic Spectre. So I probably should have put the Hippie in the box here. Oh, I'm, I am going to lose a card. There's a Tetravis. Oh, I think I've made some mistakes here. I think I this was an oversight. I think I forgot about the Hypnotic Spectre and, of course, the, uh, the Strip Mine. Maybe I forgot about the Strip Mine. I don't know. I can't remember. But... This was definitely an oversight. Now I'm losing the Tetravis, which is a great card, especially in combination with the Tannis' Coffin. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, it's, I'm still in a super good position, but 
it's kind of stupid. I mean, it would have been better to put the Hypnotic Spectre into the box and take four, or what probably would have been better is not to play out the book, but play out the Tetravis instead. I'm not sure if I had enough mana for that. But anyway, it's water under the bridge. It has happened. What we're seeing right now is me using the, um, the Candelabra of Taunus again to draw an extra card. So two cards in hand, all my lands untapped. So I mean, this Candelabra is, works so good when you've got Tron. The problem is a lot of times you don't have Tron, but when you do, oh, rocket launcher. Oh man, I'm sorry, Yoop. Oh, this is just insult after injury. Oh God. So there are two rocket launchers in the deck finding both here. And yeah, that is so bad. And of course, this is a tough matchup for Mono Black because Black, you know, traditionally doesn't have a lot of answers to artifacts. So this, this could feel like an uphill battle here for Yoop. I think after, of course, the, uh, the Mirror Universe, it kind of was a done deal. But hey, Yoop is still alive. He's on six, clinging on to what he has. I've got no cards in hand showing that to, you, to Yoop, saying, attack me with the hippie, I don't care. And look at this, on his end step, the end of his end step, using the uh, rocket launcher. Oh, and I can actually use it to just kill, of course, my opponent. I don't even need it. Going to try to put as many mana into uh, into the pool as I possibly can using the Candelabra as well. Showing it here to you with the dice. So I've got 10 mana. Then I'm going to untap the Tron Lance. I'm going to tap them again, meaning I've got 14 lands in total. That's 7 points of damage here I can deal to my opponent, to Yoop. And yeah, I mean, it is nice to see my deck doing what it's supposed to do. This is definitely part of the strategy, Candelabra of Tonus, together with Tron, together with Rocket Launcher, uh, using it at the end of the end step, and then again in my turn, that's part of the strategy. So it's nice, you know, when a plan comes together. It makes me feel like Hannibal from the A-Team. That's, that's a really good feeling. Anyway, uh, we are going to shuffle up, and we will catch back up with you in game uh, number two. Game number two. Here we go, my opponent here. Yoop on the play. Oh, ho, ho, again, again? Unbelievable. Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. This time it's better because he's on the play. He also did this in game one. Um, okay, let's see. Hopefully I've got a maze. Or at least a desert. No, Urtis Tower. Oh, this is good. I do ramp up a little bit. I didn't take a mulligan this time, so six in hand still passing the turn. Already getting the cards ready for the hit here. Going to drop to 18 and more importantly lose a card. This could be a problem. Nevenerol's disc gone. That's unfortunate. That's one of the answers, of course, for me. To get rid of the uh, Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, finding a power plant. So if I can find maybe an Urtz's Mine next turn, I've got enough mana to, for example, play out a Triskelion and uh, kill the Hypnotic Spectre. There's the attack. Five in hand, going to lose another card. And, of course, two life, dropping to 16 here. Juggernaut gone. Yeah, that's not too bad. There is a Royal Assassin. So now I really need to come up with an answer for the Hippie. No mine, unfortunately, for me. Okay, again, finding a Rocket Launcher. So that's something. The problem is I got three cards in hand. He can attack me again. I'm going to lose. I only have two cards left. So Rocket Launcher is a solution, but it's super slow, of course. There's the attack, also with the uh, Royal Assassin. So I'm going to drop here to 13, losing a card. Losing a Power Plant. Two cards in hand. Yeah, I wonder what I'm going to do. Like, I can use Rocket Launcher, of course, to kill the Hypnotic Spectre, but maybe... I mean, again, it depends on what I have in hand. Do I want to protect it? Can I play it out, yes or no? What are my options here? Three cards in hand, I believe, after to draw two cards for my opponent. But I'm already on 13. It's looking pretty bad. I was kind of lucky, of course, in game one, finding the double desert. I mean, how often does that happen? Pointing out that I've got the rocket launcher really in the tank here, passing the turn. It looks like I've, I'm planning to just take the damage and then on the end step of my opponent, do my rocket launcher trick again. He's going to tap two black. 
Oh, there's a sinkhole though. Oh, this is really bad. So it's kind of forcing me to make a decision here. I feel like I have to use the rocket launcher straight away, right? Exactly. I mean, I've got to do what I've got to do. Taking damage, going to 10, like this is not ideal. If I could have used the rocket launcher twice, at least I also could have destroyed the Royal Assassin. So I really need like a good four drop. A Suchi could be quite nice. Tapping four here, what is it gonna be? Juggernaut, okay, I mean, Juggernaut is, is something, but remember, I have to attack with the Juggernaut each turn and you having that Royal Assassin, so it's probably not gonna live long, but at least it's gonna soak up some damage for now. Gonna tap three here. Another Hypnotic Spectre, oh man, that is killer, that is killer. I mean, I had to, to do so much, put in so much effort to destroy that first hippie, and I would just place a second half to attack her with the Juggernaut, getting, of course, destroyed by the Assassin. Ay, 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 this is not looking good for me in game number two. Tapping four, there's an Icy, but I don't have any mana to also use the Icy to tap down the hippie, so I'm gonna lose another card, and more importantly, take damage. He's got three Mishra's Factories as well, by the way. If he finds a land, he could hit me for eight, also attack with the Royal, hit me for nine, put me on one. Wow. This game too is going really bad. Look at that, animating everything. Alpha strike, baby. Wow, I'm gonna drop to a measly one and I'm gonna lose a card here. What a disaster. Look at that, losing the Triskelion. That's one of those cards that can kind of get you out of a hole. Of course, I couldn't cast it, don't have six mana yet. And probably never will. So yeah, this is uh, this is really bad. Of course, look at that. So I had Sword of the Ages and Juggernaut in hand, showing my hand here. And uh, yeah, there's really nothing I can do. Losing game number two, and I think really to the hippies here. I mean, Hypnotic Spectre turn one is so good against my deck. And yeah, in game one, of course, I was on the play and I was able to find a double desert. That kind of saved me out of that uh, hippie situation. But in game two, I wasn't as fortunate. The good news though is, is that it's now 1-1 and that means we are going to go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1. I'm on the play, of course, after losing that second game. Oh, look at this. Finding a Black Lotus here in my opener, but no uh, turn one play though for me. I thought maybe Black Lotus, for example, into a Suji or Juggernaut. It's not happening though. Yup here playing a Willow the Wisp and passing the turn. Let's see what I can do. Oh, this is really good. Mishra's Workshop, talking about a really, really overpowered opening here. And I guess I just top decked the Workshop here or else I would have opened up with this. Killing the Willow to Wisp straight away. So only two counters left on the Triskelion. It's a 3-3 now. And I mean, Trike is so good against uh, the deck of Yup. Remember, he's got a lot of 1-1s. Netling Imp, um, Sorcerer's Queen, Royal Assassin. Of course, the Will of the Wisp I just killed, but also Hypnotic Spectres with just two toughness. So this is really bad news here for Yoop. He's got to find a way, maybe like if he can just get a Sengir or force me somehow to kind of use my counters on other stuff, that would be great for him. Look at that, just a pass though. No Sinkhole as well. Sinkhole on Workshop would have been brilliant, of course. There is a Tower. Attacking first for three. So going to put Yoop here on 17. Tapping four, what are we gonna see? Oh, Atonis' Coffin, so now I can start using the Coffin, put the Triskelion in the Coffin, untap, then the Triskelion comes back into play, ETBs, that means it gets all the counters on it again. We do see a Dark Ritual here into a Sengir Vampire, so Yoop is doing something back. And of course, I do need an extra mana if I wanna activate the Coffin, it's three to activate, so I'm not there yet. Okay, there's a Maze of If to kind of hold the, uh, the Sengir Vampire at bay. Looked, looked like I wanted to tap four, but changed my mind. Wonder what my options are here. Attacking, of course, not really being an option because the trike is just a 3-3. Three, three. At the moment, passing the turn here. So uh, I guess I'm trying to be patient here. You finding another swamp. There's the attack, so sending him back. And passing the turn. Okay, so this is good news for me. Hopefully I can find a land and I can start using the Tonus's Coffin on my own Triskelion. Oh, there's a power plant. Yeah, this is insane. Again, Tron. 
We saw Tron in game one. If my deck hits Tron, it's, it's crazy. I can do so many crazy things. I've got so much mana right now. Tapping seven, tapping ten. Wow. Ten mana. Casting another Triskelion. So that's six. So still have four mana left. There's a Nevenerals disc. Wow. And I wonder if I'm going to kill the Sengir. No, I'm not just passing the turn. I think looking back at this, I'm not, I don't really get why I'm playing out the Nevenerals disc. What I could have done here is, is use that mana to use my coffin, putting one of my Triskelions into the coffin. I think that would have made more sense. But um, yeah, let's see what else I'm going to do. You're tapping six again. Another Triskelion or Tetravis perhaps. So tapping everything. So again, 10 mana in the pool. Okay, playing a Candelabra of Tanus. What's really important to note here, though, is that the mana from the workshop can only be used to cast artifacts. So it's a, that, that's an important thing here. And okay, playing Sword of the Ages. Okay, so that works. And then I'm going to use the coffin, putting the Triskelion into the coffin. So it goes into the coffin with the counters on it. And when it comes out of the coffin, uh, coffin, it keeps the counters it already had. Because that, you know, that's how the card works. But it also ETBs. So the counters, there are new counters added. So if this strike comes back next turn, it will come back as a 6-6. Because it's now a 3-3 and it'll get the 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters again. So it's really neat to kind of show you this synergy. This is part of the deck's uh, strategy. But usually it's really hard to pull it off because there's just so much... It takes so much mana, it, it takes time, uh, it's so easy to disrupt, but I'm just really lucky here that of course I'm playing a mono black deck where you don't have a lot of artifact disruption. As a matter of fact, you have zero, right? Anyway, we see a huge Triskelion now hitting the board. I'm doing my Candelabra shenanigans again, just gaining lots and lots of mana. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a short game, I think, playing out here the Suchi. And one of the things I could do here is just shoot the Sengir out of the sky and attack with the other Trike. And of course, I also have the Sword of the Ages. So Sword of the Ages, a card from Legends, I can tap and sack it. Uh, and then also sack an X amount of creatures and deal damage equal to their power to any target. So now I've got, for example, a Suchi with 4 power, a Trike with 4 power, and a Trike with 6 power. So together, that's already 14 damage that I can deal here to my opponent. Ooh, it looks like I'm going to do business here, taking counters off, destroying the Sangir. Going to put my Trike in the box. So I should untap my Taunus's Coffin here. It looks like I'm forgetting to do that. So I should have untapped the Coffin here, let the Trike go out, and then it would have gained three counters again. So a little bit sloppy here. Attacking with the 5-5, five five, so he's going to tap the 5-5, five five, attacking with the Suchi, dealing 3 points of damage, putting him on 13. And then I think I can already kill him next turn if I don't forget to let the Trike out of the Taunus' Coffin, because it, because it comes back as a 4-4, four four, and then it can use the Sword of the Ages to win the game. So Yup really needs kind of a miracle here. He needs to shatter Storm in black. Passing the turn, exactly, so... The Triskelion is going to come back as a 4-4. And that means I've got 4 power from the Trike, 4 power from the Suchi, that's 8, and 5 power from the Trike, that's 13. So I've got enough power here to blow up my opponent with a Sword of the Ages. And it's really, I mean, I'm really enjoying this. It's a little bit one-sided in game number three. And it's, I guess I'm really a favorite in this matchup here because, you know, like I said, Mono Black doesn't have a lot of answers, but it is really nice to kind of see my deck doing what it's supposed to do. The Candelabra is working. The, the Taunus' Coffin is working. The, you know, the counter trick with the Trike is working. The, we, we saw the rocket launcher working. Like everything was working on full cylinders. I managed to finally get Tron in a few games. Like when you see Tron here, you think, oh, it's actually really good in old school. But I can tell you, you know, and, and old Tron players that took a Tron deck in old school to a tournament can tell you as well, it is really tough. And a lot of times you don't assemble Tron, you just draw another Urza's Tower or, you know, Urza's Tower number four or something instead of finding the Tron lines. Anyway, uh, this was the match for today. Thank you so much for watching. 
And uh, if you, uh, before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Another thing that you can do is of course, become a subscriber if you're not sub subscribed yet. So, you know, it's really appreciated. And I also have, like I mentioned in the introduction of this video, a Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and check out how also you can support the channel and maybe we can even make an episode together. So if you would like to do that, check out uh, patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the details. And for now, we are going to go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? 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 Ik het als fikker te samba kan zien.